is a breed. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we are going to be attempting to breed Celebes rainbow fish. This is the first in a series of videos we are planning on how to breed different types of fish we keep in our fish room. We are recording this at the beginning of the process so we actually have no idea if we can indeed breed Celebes rainbow fish. But if we end up posting this video and you're watching it right now, then it turns out that future us's did in fact manage to breed Celebes rainbow fish. In which case, yay for future us's. We did it babe, we bred Celebes rainbow fish. We've torn down the tank and removed all the plants. The fish hopefully only spawn on the breeding mop we've chucked in there. Yeah, the tank looks kind of naff, but hopefully it'll do the job. Should probably add, we are just using dechlorinated tap water. Nothing special about this setup at all. Okay, next day, so we've got the breeding mop out and we're just going for it to see if we can find some eggs. We've watched a lot of videos on how to breed a rainbow. Oh, there we go, look. Oh, there's two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Oh, wow. Five. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to gently take them off the mop and pop them in the water. One. So we've seen um, Jadron Aquatics and a few others do this method removing the eggs from the spawning mop and then placing them in a separate aquarium slash tub. So we'll see how this works. So breeding them is already working out. It's hatching them that's going to be the Oop. trick I'm getting. There's quite a few. Mm -hmm. Luckily we managed to get the rainbow fish quite large and Ready to breed. Are you keeping count, babe? <laughs> no, I was talking to people on YouTube. <laughs> oh, not either. Okay. Ugh, this is, might want to come back in a minute because it's going to take okay. a while. Okay, <laughs> right, so we'll cut away from this and. Hi, guys. So I've just finished pulling the eggs from the mop. As you can see, we have around 20 eggs, which is super exciting. So yeah, we'll see how we go with them. We have two methods to try and hatch out these little dudes. Our first method is the Zis egg tumbler which we purchased from a really nice guy in the UK, link in the description, non-affiliate. And the second is a standard small aquarium set up with methylene blue, a sponge filter and a heater using dechlorinated tap water. We're going to split the eggs up and keep adding to them daily as we check the spawning mops and we will work out which method is best. So we just harvested a few more eggs and threw them in the egg tumbler. Unfortunately, we noticed this. All of the eggs are tangled up in dog hair. Hmm, I wonder where that could have come from. Um, babe, you shaved the wrong dog. Oh. So the next day all of the eggs in the egg tumbler had fungus up because of the dog hair and the eggs in the aquarium also fungused up because of dog hair getting into the aquarium. So this was a fail. We managed to hatch one or two. As you can see, one's dead. Uh, back to the drawing board. On this attempt, we're using a different approach. We're just removing the spawning mops each day from the Celebes rainbow fish and sticking them in here. This is just tap water 
dechlorinated tap water, sorry, with a little bit of methylene blue. This way we can avoid contaminating the eggs with dog hair and just general germs by picking them up with our hands. So we'll test out this method and see if it, we get a better hatch rate. So it has been around eight days since we placed the spawning mops in the aquarium and this morning we have come down to a lovely bunch of fry. We have roughly counted about 25 but there may be a few more than that. We are super happy and I'm really chuffed that we have been successful finally. Placing the spawning mops in an aquarium with a heater and a small air stone is the way to go in our case anyway. Let's see if we can keep them alive for more than 24 hours this time. It's now three days later and we have moved the 32 to 35 fry into our hallway aquarium with our neocaridina and snails and the reason we've done this is because the fry that we did have survive we ended up overfeeding and we perished unfortunately so this way we can put in a lot more food and the shrimp and snails are polishing it off so it doesn't pollute the water and we've also put in a load of blanket weed, also known as hair algae, which everyone hates, but I finally found a good use for it, as it contains a ton of paramecium and microorganisms that these guys can chow down on. So they seem to be doing really well. If you like this vid, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and if you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to our channel, as we have... A lot of plans to breed a lot of fish over the next few weeks and months and we'll be able to keep you updated on how these guys go and if we can raise them to adulthood which we're quite confident about now so yeah thanks for watching as always and take care And we pulled a load of blanket weed, also known as hair algae, in from the pond, and it's done the world, made the world. Oh my god! Re oh. So we're going to try a different method, and we're just going to be. Oh my god! So we count around thirty-two to thirty-five fry. Fry, glorious fry. <laughs> uh, that's the end of this video if you like the video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you like this you <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. babe can you take the bloody batteries out of the goddamn doorbell